morning. But because he says I ran on the just as well as the unjust, he allowed you to come to service this morning. Amen. So can I say, can we give him a shout of praise this morning? Can we give him a hand clap of praise this morning? Can we enter into his days with thanksgiving? Glory be to God. Can we enter into his gates with thanksgiving? Oh, we know the turkey is coming. <laughs> Oh, we know the peach cobbler and the yes, sweet potato pies is coming. But there is nothing as sweet as Jesus yes. is in our lives. Yes, yeah, oh, sweet yes, Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, as I was, y'all know how I get when I worship. As I was worshiping him on that song Jenna was doing, and, 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 and let the rain fall. But when it falls, what's going to happen to us? Are we going to be in the same shape we was when we came in, or are we going to be different? It's time for a difference, y'all. You know, Glad and I have been, been conversing this week on my message. Y'all know how I get, how I get. I'll be having it together. I say I'm having it together. And then he decides he want to add something to the flavor. So, 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 you know, funding Brother Rick, praise God did an awesome word on faith, stirred me up. That's what the word does, amen? And then, so I visited Wednesday night here with, with Pastor Wright, and his message was on faith. I say, Lord, you trying to tell me something? You know, I believe in confirmations. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna study faith this week. Why not, you know, threefold cord is not easily broken. So I go through my thing, Quine, you can go ahead and start the PowerPoint. I go ahead and I started, I do this PowerPoint this morning, and I'll talk about faith. And so as I'm getting ready and I'm putting everything in my handbag, you know, some women got them big handbags, so it'll take a while. So I'm putting everything in my handbag, and then God gives me a scripture. And I'm like, what? That ain't, that ain't, that ain't my message for today. You know my message, God, you know me and you, we, we got this thing, you know. And he said, read it. Now, I'm getting ready to leave out the door this morning. I ain't had time to read the whole passage that he gave me, but he said, read it. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. <laughs> y'all know what? Uh, y'all be saying God, uh, you know, has a sense of humor. <laughs> We're going to do this thing, okay. Yes. We're going to do just what he told me to do. Yes. 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 So, so last night he said, you give him a word of encouragement. Because... So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 7. And so as I'm in my car driving, that's just kind of how he is, right? When, when we say faith comes by hearing, but is it hearing the preacher or is it hearing from God? So this morning he reminded me it's hearing from him. So I'm riding in the car and we having this conversation about how am I supposed to do this and is you going to be with me because if you don't go, I ain't going and, and, and so he just starts stirring up. I mean, I was so full when I left home that I had church by myself. Yes. Because I can't wait till I get here to get stirred up by the praise team. That's not their job. Because if God lives in me, the spirit is already there working. The power of God is already moving. I just need to bring the body with me. So, so it's not the praise team fault if you don't feel nothing. <laughs> if they can't shout you happy, you should have been shouting when you got up this morning. Amen. So and again, as I'm going on the ride to the church and I'm trying to figure out, okay, what part does this come in? Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we know how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach unless he be sent? That's what the word says. Amen. I'm sent this morning, y'all. I'm sent this morning, y'all. I'm dangerous this morning. Because it was fine when I did my little cute PowerPoint, but when the anointing fell this morning, <laughs> I don't need a PowerPoint. Yeah. I'm gonna show it though. <laughs> Y'all ain't crazy. I done did it. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show part of it. Next slide, Quan. I just wanted y'all to see that. Now faith. Now faith. Now faith is the substance 
of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. So I want to take a few minutes to talk about my pastor. I'm going to read what God told me to read, and we're going to go home. Is that all right? Okay, so it says, faith in God means believing and trusting in the greatest hope. In the greatest hope. In the, in, y'all hear me? I'm trusting in the greatest hope that God became man, amen, lived a perfect life, died a sacrificial death to your, for your sins, and rose again to the glory that you could have eternal life by the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. He has transformed us from death to life, but some of us are still living like we're dead. Yes. Yes. Amen. So, so as we was talking this morning, I said, okay, well, I, 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 I say it's, it, it's faith over fear. He said, no, because that's the cliche, right? The t-shirts, faith over fear. He said, no. Now, I'm not, coming, I'm not coming to condemn anybody, and I don't want anybody to feel bad, because y'all know that's not me. But I do get a little crazy sometimes when it comes to God. He said, not faith over fear. He said, well, faith over COVID. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, what? Because, see, like, you, you know, the Bible said, confess your sins one to the other. Y'all don't mind. I don't mind telling y'all what I do, because that way y'all can't say I'm talking about y'all, even though I'm talking about y'all. Anyway, so, so I said, faith over COVID. God, what you got to do with COVID? He says to me, my churches are still closed. Yes. He says, my people are still home. What is the lost going to do when they can't come to the church? What about the ones that are dying? What about the ones that are dying? Now, see, I said confess your sins one to the other because when COVID came out and everybody said, stay home, and, and, and they said, do this, and they said, do that, I was the first. Oh, I had my excuses, too. I said, well, you know, I'm going to use wisdom. <laughs> you know, God wouldn't want me out there and all that stuff. <laughs> Oh, 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 I got to stay home because, you know, the, the doctors and the, and the people on TV all said do this and do that. But what about what God said? Yeah. I said, Lord, forgive me. And, and, and then I had a message come across. They said, if I die and what God anointed me to do, what God appointed me to do, what God called me to do, if I die of COVID or anything else, get hit by a bus, it really don't matter. If I die doing what God says, it's worth it. Yeah. But we got to open the doors. Yeah. Because there's still a dying generation out there. Yeah. There's still somebody that needs you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I am condemned even when I have to pass out things to the people that I support in my ministry. Oh, I need to be mindful. Oh, I need to be mindful. No, I need to be standing in faith. He reminded me of Paul when he was shipwrecked. He told Paul, you have to go over the water. And then there was a large shipwreck. And then Paul was trying to tell them, y'all might not want to do this. But of course, they didn't listen to the man of God. So he said, okay, you won't listen to me. Let me say this. You're not going to lose any loss of life, but your boat, your ship is going to be tore up. And it was. But they made it to the other side. Because why? Because God promised Paul, you got to stand in court. So Paul knew then I had a promise from God. So that promise is going to take me where I need to go. Amen. Amen. We have a promise from God that he will be with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will be with us always, even until the end of the world. But fear came. Yes. Yes. Fear came. But God tells us, I did not give you the spirit of fear, but a sound mind. Yes, use wisdom, but the wisdom of God. Yes, yes. Because if I get whatever I get, if I don't have God, it does not matter. Yes, yes. But he says to me, the doors are closed. Now, the natural mind started flipping like, yeah, you're right, because I have family and friends that, oh, we do virtual, we do virtual, we, and that's cool. Is that's where you are in your faith. But I don't want to see you and anybody else in Walmart on Black Friday. Because if you can go to Walmart, then you can come to church. Amen. 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 
Because God is over Walmart and the church. Yeah. And if he can keep you in the shopping line, he can sure enough keep you in the seat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I had to repent. Yes. Because I was one who was crying out in the wilderness, maybe we need to do this and maybe we need to do that. Y'all would do. But then God had to shake me. Yes. And to remind me, who do you serve? Choose this day. Thank you, Lord. So, so those are the kind of conversations that we have. Yes. If I anointed you to go, am I not going to be with you? If I save you, don't you think I can heal you? Amen. Yes. If he feeds the sparrow, my son told me the other day, he texted me. You need to store up one food. There's going to be a food shortage. But well, there was a food shortage before. Mm -hmm. And God fed his people. Yeah. My freezer are running over. I don't even need to eat that much. But God, we have to recognize why we're here. Because those that are watching us is wondering, is there a God? Because the people in the bars were fighting and picketing. We got to stay open because this is our source of income. Yeah. But the churches ain't picking and saying this is our source of life. Yeah. Where is the church today? Amen. Amen. The bars over the church? The football game fills stadiums. Yeah. But you got to go virtual? I see you at the football games. I'll be virtual then. And, and, and I see you jumping and shouting because your child made a touchdown. Well, Jesus made a touchdown a long time ago so that he can bring you into the kingdom. Amen. Don't forget about him and what he's done for you and what he's done for me. We have to remember who God is. And that's why I think he's... I'm going to read now, okay? You know the song she says, Surrounded by your glory... What will my heart feel? Will I be ashamed to stand in front of you because I ran from what the man said would kill me? But people are dying every day. I ain't say run to it. I say don't be afraid of it. Because God can heal you of whatever disease if you believe by faith. Faith comes by hearing. Hear the word of the pastor, but hear the word of God. Have that connection with him that you have an understanding that if you have a question, go to him. It's not about man that called us to this place. It's about the glory of God. Oh, yes, rain down on us, God. We don't ask that you give us more faith. We ask that we use the faith that you have given us. Use the faith. We still commission to go into all the world. That's what reminded me. You know what I said to him? Are you sure you need to go to Russia? <laughs> Somebody had told me prior to his, you know, making his plans, you know the, the, the um, counts or whatever they call it, are going up in Russia. Russia's inundated with COVID. Are you sure you need to go to Russia? <laughs> but faith, Amen. souls, people were more important. If I die doing what God has signed me to do, let me die. Yes, yes. But, but, but like the prophet Elijah that was running from Jezebel, and he was in a cave because he was scared she was going to what? Kill him. Now, she didn't have COVID, but he was scared. And what did God say to him? Get up. Get out. I've had thousands that have not taken down yet. What are you talking about? This is the same one that got fed by the water brook. This is the same one that called fire down from heaven. But he was scared. See, we got scared, y'all. Let's, let's tell the truth. The church got afraid. So if we were afraid, did that mean God's word is not real? Were well, we leaning on something else but the word of God? We were listening too much for man. Cut the TV off. I'm saying it to me now. And let God <laughs> instruct us again. Yes. Don't let 2021 find you 
in a cave because God said, get up and get out. <clears throat> now, I'm going to read this because after I read it, there ain't going to be anything else to say because he's already done said it. All right? Believe you me. And, 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 and as I was reading through it this morning, the anointing of God just came down to like, okay, yeah, God, that's it. I find myself in the place. I'm not judging anybody. I'm talking about me. It's in Deuteronomy 30, starting at the first verse. And Quan, if you can keep up with me, fine. If you can't, that's fine, too. We can take it home and, and read it. Deuteronomy in the Message Bible starts like this. It says, hear what will happen. While you're out among the nations where God has dispersed you and the blessing and the cursings come in just a way, I have set them before you. And you and your children take them seriously. And come back to God, your God, and obey him with your whole heart and soul according to everything that I have commanded you today. God your God will restore everything you lost. He has compassion on you. He, he'll come back and pick, he'll come back and pick up the pieces from all the places where you were scattered. No matter how far away you end, God, your God, will get you out of there and bring you back to the land your ancestors once possessed. It will be yours again. He will give you a good life and make you more numerous than your ancestors. God, your God, will cut away the thick calluses on your hearts and your children's heart, freeing you to love God, your God, with your whole heart and soul and live, really live. I don't think we lived in the last two years. We didn't live. We didn't see people. We didn't hug people. We didn't love people. We became so stagnant that it was all about me. If somebody coughed in the store, you can do this. <laughs> God still has a shield or protection around you. He still has it. He said, but if you just come back to me, I'll make you more plentiful than your ancestors. God, your God, will put all the curses on your enemies who hated you and were out to get you. And you will make a new start, listening obediently to God, keeping all his commandments that I have commanded you today. God, your God, Will undo him, will outdo himself. Oh, I like that. He will outdo himself in making things go well for you. How many of y'all need that right now? He will outdo his. Can he do more? Yes. I, I, can he do any more than what he's already done? He said, "I'm going to outdo myself." <laughs> That's my God. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Eight says. And you will make a new start listening obediently to God, keeping all his commandments that I command you today. God, your God, will outdo himself in making things go well for you. You'll have babies, whew, get calves, grow crops, and enjoy an all-around good life. God wants us to enjoy our life, not live in fear. Yes, yes, yes. Enjoy what I have given I have blessed you abundantly. And you're going to take it in hiding? God's going to give you a talent. You're going to put it up under the tree and wait for him to come back. He said, enjoy your life. Yeah, I keep losing my spot. That's okay. And, and, and he says, God, was, God says, enjoy it again, making things go well for you as he wants you to enjoy doing for your ancestors. But only if you listen obediently to God, your God, and keep the commandments and the regulation written in the book of Revelation, Nothing half-hearted here. Nothing half-hearted here. You must return to God. We must return to God and remember exactly who he is. That wasn't in there. I put that in there. God, totally, wholeheartedly, soul and mind. 
holding nothing back. Holding nothing back. Holding nothing back. If God has given you a commission, an assignment, anointed you to do, gave you a vision, gave you a dream, gave you a life, you can't hold it back because of COVID. I know there's some that's been in the hospital. I know there's, I have family that have died from this dreaded disease or whatever you want to call it. But that still didn't stop God from being God. Amen. Neither does cancer. Amen. Neither does these foolish shootings. Amen. It don't stop God from being God. Amen. And we have to remember that. If I save you, don't you think I can heal you? But the world needs to know that we believe that, y'all. Amen. The enemy has made a joke out of the church. The, the, the money in the world system is still going up. So somebody's shopping. Yes. Rather they shopping online or shopping in the store, sending somebody at it like me, I might drop off at the door. But but somebody's still spending money somewhere. Yes, yes, yes. But the church is deplenishing. Now, if that ain't a trick of the devil, then I'm going to make the church folks think that it's okay to stay home because, you know, y'all using wisdom. <laughs> you know, use wisdom, stay home. But then he tells those in the street, go to the party, go to the bar, go to the joke joint. I got you. I heard on one of them TikTok things, some young man sold his soul to the devil. So, for fame and fortune. It's still real. See, the enemy is still real, but my God is greater. That's the thing the church needs to remember. No matter what's going on, the flood is going to come. Famine is going to come. It's going to be time they're going to knock on the door, and they're going to ask you the question, is Jesus your Lord? So if I can't stand up to COVID, I sure can't stand up to a gun. Yes. So what do I say? Choose this day who you're going to serve. Choose this day. Verse 11 says, this commandment that I am commanding you today isn't too much for you. It's not out of your reach. This is the message Bible now. You know, they be straight. It's not out of your reach. It's not on a high mountain. You don't have to get a mountaineer to climb to the peak and bring it down to your level and explain it before I can live, before you can live it. You don't need no master scientist to tell you about God. You know God personally. Yes. Yes. 13 says, and it is not across the ocean that you have to send a sailor out to get it and bring it back and explain it before you can live it. You don't have to wait till they release and say COVID is gone to live a good life. Because if God has promised us a good life, we got to live the good life. Amen. Ecclesiastes said that the time to live and the time to die, you choose. And I'm talking about I'm waking up every morning and saying, Lord, it's another day. I, I don't even like going to sleep. That's crazy now, I love sleep. I, because I don't want the day to end. I don't know where that comes from, but it's come from recently. Like, oh man, the time for it to be over. I ain't think I'm still living. So I wake up and I do it all over again. But what's going to happen to that day that I don't wake up? And I stand before my God. And he asks me about my talents that he has anointed me to do, assigned me to do, given to me to do. And I'm going to say to him, but you know, they told me to stay home. At least another year. It's going to be all good. Oh, so now they determine what the world's going to do. Y'all taking it out of the hand of God, and now you're giving it to the hand of man. So I'm going to stand before my Savior. Oh, I can only imagine. Surrounded by his glory, what will my eyes see? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all, yeah, I'm going to be quiet if I'm not doing what he told me to do. If I don't do what he told me to do. And see, I, I, I think I, 
I, I, we talk about young people like in this microwave religion where they just want to get it on TV and they want to go do what they want to do. But, but the church has kind of got a microwave religion too. Because as long as it's comfortable and I don't have to come out of my you know, comfort zone, I'll do. But when you pull me out of my comfort zone, Lord, you know, so if he would have told you like he told the disciples, I got to go away. When I came here, I knew I was going to die. Now I'm leaving here, I have to die. And then Paul and Silas being locked in jail, beaten, ripped to shreds, whatever you want to call it, knowing that and they break out and say, let's have a praise break. We can't get a praise break in worship time, but they in jail praising God. Come on, y'all, I'm just trying to get y'all to see what's real and what's not real. If they can praise God in the prison after being whooped, probably not fed, probably no air conditioning, no bathrooms, come on now, no TV. Paul said, let's have a praise break. Let's shake some foundations up in here. And then they break loose and come out and do what? Save a soul. There was an assignment. And then we take Peter. See, we can't have this cushion kind of religion. We take Peter. Peter, you're going to die. We're going to crucify you because you the one follow that Jesus. See, y'all follow that Jesus. So when it's time to crucify you, what are you going to say to the world? Peter said, crucify me, but not like my master. Turn me upside down. I ain't worthy to die like he died. What are we going to say? When they ask us to choose Jesus over this world. When the Lord speaks to you at night and tell you, I need you to go, and you say, I can't do it. Because that ain't, that ain't me, that's somebody else's calling. Come on now. Okay, so 14 says, no, the word is right here and now. Now faith is the substance. Now faith, your faith right now. He says, as near as the tongue in your mouth, as near as the heart in your chest, as near, God couldn't get any nearer. He put the Holy Spirit inside of you to teach you all things, to help you live in this life, to help you do his will on the earth. He says, as close as it is to the heart, in your chest, that heart that, that's pumping blood right now, so that you can stay alive. The next verse says, just do it. Just do it. Flip on that Nike hat, just do it. He says, I'm near to you. I am near to you. Look at what I've done for you today. I place in front of you life and good death and evil choices. He says, and I command you today, love God, your God, walk in his ways, keep his commandments, regulations, rules, so that you will live, really live, live exuberantly, blessed by God, your God, in the land you are about to enter and possess. When you leave this place today and you go out in your car, God says live abundantly. He says, I'm going to allow you. I told you, you possess the land. You possess the land. You're kings, queens, prince, princes, princes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Princesses in the kingdom of God. I sit you high above this earth. You're sitting at the right hand. We have to just know who we are in him. And you walk with your head held high. Amen. That nothing will separate me from the love of God. Not man, not sickness, not disease, not money, not famine, not schools, not Nothing shall separate you from your God when you realize 
You just call his name when he's there. Even better than that, he's in here. He's that heartbeat that's pumping blood right now that's keeping you alive. But you have to decide today. I choose God over anything. I choose God over anything. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. That's what the word says. But God says, I will prosper you. There's nobody hungry in this place because God pro prospers you, feeds you, clothes you. Put gas in the car. I'm just real. Everything that I have, I have to give God praise and glory for. Amen. Everything. Everything. So I say one more time. God says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the who is the word? He's the word. He's the living word. So if you ever have doubt about what you should and should not do, go to the word. Huh. Go to the word. I promise you he's still speaking today. I promise you he'll still answer you today. And I promise you, this was his word today. <laughs> but God, amen. amen. Let's bow our hands. Father God, in Jesus' name, there is none like you, oh God. In all of heaven and all of earth, we thank you, Lord God, because your rhema word is what feeds our souls and reminds us that you are still a living God. And that you have a living word for us today. And that you are yet the protector and the guider. Lord God, we thank you today that we can come to you with our questions because you already have the answer. God, we thank you that your Holy Spirit rules and reigns with us. That you sent him so that we can be comforted in whatever we go through, God, knowing that the Holy Spirit is yet with us. God, we thank you today for peace that passes all understanding. When man does not understand how we can walk in peace, we can tell him that because Jesus left his peace with us. And you told us, God, my peace I give you, not like man gives. So we stand in your peace today, God. We dwell in your peace today, God. That whatever goes on around us, your peace will surpass the understanding of man, and it will surpass our understanding also. You say, trust you, God. Not lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways, acknowledge you and you shall direct our paths. Oh, we're standing on your word today, God. We're standing on the living word today. God, we ask that you bless each and every one that's here today. Bless them and keep them. Let your countenance be upon them. Let your grace and your mercy follow them. Stand with them. Lift them up. Keep them. Heal them, God. We pray all these things in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.